So I'm gonna be honest with y'all. A lot of men need to learn how to treat a woman. Now, I know it's not shocking news to y'all. Y'all probably fully agree, right? And, and in your agreeance, you're probably wondering, okay, well, since you're saying this, why is this video not about that? Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. A lot of men do need to learn how to treat a woman, but a lot of women actually need to learn as well, all right? And a lot of women are doing a lot of what they feel should be respected, appreciated, and all these things, but they're kind of missing the mark. Now, understand this. Just because I do a video that tells you how to show up in a relationship, how to treat a man, so on and so forth, that is in no way saying all responsibility is on you. That is in no way saying that men don't need to learn how to do their part. And for those of you who, again, are asking, well, why aren't you teaching the men? I have a channel for men, and I will admit, I have not been as consistent as I need to be. I'm working on that. I'm going through some transitions. But once I get things settled, I'll get more consistent. But the reality is that simply teaching them doesn't help you as an individual. Because at the end of the day, you can only focus on what you can control. And I have to give you the tools on how you can generate better results for yourself. Because no matter how many men start to learn how to be better, there will still be a huge pool of men who are going to do you wrong who are, aren't going to understand how to probably respect you. So unless you understand how to navigate that or, again, how to generate better experiences for yourself, you're still going to be at a disadvantage. So videos like this are to empower you, all right? And not just empower you for the sake of, again, how you're going to experience a better relationship because a better relationship isn't just for the man, it's for you. Like, you'll be happier. You'll be more at peace. You'll have more fun in the dating process. Like, this is for you. Understand that. But yeah, he's going to benefit too. So, again, as I've talked to many different people, many different women, there's a lot of things that I think you guys are overlooking. And I understand why. I understand some of you have just been taught wrong or have a misunderstanding of certain dynamics. And I want to clear some things up. So, Here's one of the first things that I think is very important that I want to get to on how to treat a man. And that is you need to learn how to dictate the energy, not react to it. So here's the thing. I'm a firm believer in the influential power of a woman. All right. A woman can walk into the room and change the whole atmosphere of the room. She can control the energy of a household. She can impact people's lives because women's power is just, I think it's stronger than a lot of you guys may realize. And so we have this, this issue going on nowadays with this mentality of, I'm going to match your energy. I, I'm, I'm going to give you what you're giving me, right? And by doing that, you're essentially saying, I'm going to allow you to dictate to me how to show up, how to act, and how to feel. But that's not a position of power. That, that's actually a position of weakness, right? It doesn't serve you any good. And, and it, it keeps you at the, the, the what's the word I'm look, looking for? It, basically, it has you react. Like if you're dealing with a bunch of different people throughout the day and you're always matching other people's energy, then you have no consistency in your own energy. Therefore, your day is chaotic or it could be chaotic and leave you with no peace. It's going to do you so much better when you learn how to master your energy as a woman or your spirit, right? And you come into situations saying, no, I'm going to push this in a more positive direction. I'm going to, excuse me, walk more in my feminine energy because in doing that, here's a couple things that you now create for yourself. One, you now create that consistent energy that you want to stay in. And, and no one's perfect in staying in it 100% of the time, but that you're going to consistently more stay in. It's going to be your dominant energy, right? That will give you more peace. It would also learn, it will help you how to master that energy more so because you're constantly in it. So essentially, if someone's trying to be a more positive person, by consistently going into every situation with a positive mindset, you learn how to get better at doing that right? So it's going to help you master. It's going to help you have a more consistent energy. Also, believe it or not, it's going to help you expose men so much faster. 
Because what a lot of women don't realize is he, some of the men are essentially matching your energy. And when you're coming in negative, walls up, holding back, some of you don't realize how you're basically setting the stage for him to do the same thing. And you might think to yourself, well, no, if he's a genuine and good, well-intentioned man, that won't be the case. The problem is there's a lot of men who have been hurt before, who have their own walls up, not saying that they should, not saying anyone should, because you know I'm all about healing and coming in with a truly open heart. But just as you have your walls up, they do. And so you walking in with that energy only reinforces their walls because now they have to be cautious. They have to be mindful of how they move forward, right? And it doesn't allow you to see things clearly. So picture your wall as a literal wall. You can't see through that wall. Therefore, your ability to evaluate and understand what's going on with this man is severely hindered. However, when you come in walled down, positive, loving, walking your feminine energy, you're going to be able to see more clearly. And now if he cannot step up to where your energy is, so if he cannot embrace it, nurture it, welcome it, now he's clearly exposing himself as the issue here. He's clearly exposing himself as either a man with bad intentions or a man who is not ready to be serious with you. Now, for those of you who are concerned with the idea of, well, when I come in uh, loving and sweet, positive, feminine, all these things, these men don't respect it. They take advantage of me, all these different things. I need you to separate the energy from certain actions, the spirit from certain actions, meaning, okay, you could be feminine, loving, positive. Like some women will feel like, well, if I'm all sweet and feminine, he just thinks he can have sex with me, right? All right, so let's paint the picture. You're being all these wonderful things and this dude starts going straight to sex. You at that moment can still draw your line and say, oh, no, we, we, don't, we ain't going there. That's not what this is about, right? And you can do that while remaining in your sweet, positive, loving energy. Now, if he continues to not respect you drawing that line and tries to keep pushing forward, you can simply say, okay, well, I'm excusing myself. Like, well, you know, I, I'm done with this. We're not going to continue here. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't have to worry about, well, he will try to cross the line because you can, cross, you can draw it and stop him right there. And so that applies to anything, anything that you concern yourself with, well, he'll try to take advantage. No, the action of taking advantage of you is something that you will still be able to call out and say, no, this is unacceptable. It doesn't have to stop you from being open, feminine, positive, and dictating that energy, all right? A couple other angles I want to give you. I was literally having a conversation with a woman earlier about how I've met women who on the surface are very feminine looking, right? So they, they're, they're dressed a certain kind of way. They're, they carry that some certain kind of way. And so from a distance, they, they come across very feminine. However, when you interact with them, their energy, their spirit is very dry. It's, it's very detached, right? Again, those walls are up. And so it doesn't create a desire for them. It, it actually makes it like, it, it, I remember, I've, I've had a few situations where I, I've come across that with women that I would have considered dating, but once engaging with them, I was like, oh no, this, this isn't going to work because that energy was just so off. And you have to be mindful as a woman, are you derailing some of your situations because of that dry, neutral type of energy? And again, a lot of that stems from walls up, which stems from fear. And for those of you who are believers, listen, you have to walk in the faith of God, not in fear, because in fear, you won't get the, the, true, the true blessings that are waiting for you, so to speak. Okay. Um, and even if you're not a believer, it's like moving in fear does not produce positive results. So you want to be mindful of that. And I think just before we move on to the next point, you know, again, w walking in that energy, always so detached, always with walls up, always so guarded, it's like putting on unnecessary stress in your life. It puts on unnecessary worry in your life. And then what happens is when someone, when you meet someone who you actually feel really into or you really like, and they start to naturally pull you away or pull you from around that wall, 
that can make you very scared. And that alone can then derail the situation. So I feel like there's a lot more for us to talk about, but I don't want to just stay on this point. But the bottom line is learn how to dictate the energy. And I'll say one more thing about dictating the energy. Even when we're having disagreements, there's a natural inclination to get more intense, get more harsh, get more negative, whatever, if you feel like you're being tested or someone's coming at you the wrong way. But I can tell you as a coach, as just an individual who practices this same method of I'm going to dictate the energy, I know firsthand that when I've stayed calm, when I did not allow their negativity to make, cause me to react to it, I was able to push the conversation in a more positive direction. I've even had situations where people started off coming at me super disrespectful. And by the end of it, they like loved the hell out of me and, and their whole energy was different. But the way they came in initially was because they had a lot of things they were battling within themselves and they were taking it out on me. I know that's not easy. I know it's difficult. But this, is, this practice of dictating the energy is very beneficial in all of your relationships. So highly consider it. All right, so let's keep this moving. So the next thing, next thing for you to know about how to treat a man is you want to speak to uplift, not destroy. All right? So though I think a lot of women understand this is the right thing to do, I think for many of you, there have been moments where you got lost in the situation or you allowed a negative feeling to get the best of you and you did not realize how sharp your tongue was. You did not realize how you were speaking down on the man. You did not realize how you were piling on more negativity rather than finding a way to uplift him. Now, I know some of you are saying, well, why is it our job to have to uplift this man why he can't pull himself up right it's not that it's your job but again relationships are about how we can make each other better how we can pour into each other how we can be an asset and a, and a positive influence in each other's life if we're going to be a negative presence in any way why are we even there and if your counter argument to me is, well, if he wouldn't do such and such, if, if these men wouldn't do this thing, then I wouldn't have to talk like this. Then my counter to you would be, why are you dealing with him? If, if you find it to where you, I'll give you an example using myself. All right. If, if I was dating a woman and she was coming at me disrespectfully, which hasn't really happened like that, but let's just say that happened to me. My response would not be get disrespectful too. My response would first be, as I mentioned in the first point, try to keep things calm, st still correcting and checking the situation because you got to do what you got to do. You got to draw the line. You got to say, hey, this, ain't, this is not acceptable, right? I ain't going to let nobody just pump me here, <laughs> but I must do it in a respectful manner. Now, if it gets to the point where I feel like I'm about to get real disrespectful if I keep going back and forth with this person. I'm ending the conversation. I'm done. I'm leaving this situation because I should not have to stoop down to that negative level. And if I feel like this person is giving me too much reason that I can't keep myself on a higher plane, so to speak, then there's no reason for me to be there. And I think what unfortunately happens with a lot of women uh, might have happened to you is that you're in this situation with this man who you feel like deep inside doesn't deserve your respect, whether that's in general or in this very moment. And you stay there and continue to deal with him despite engaging in this disrespectful back and forth, this disrespectful talk, all these different things. Or for some of you, you have become accustomed to this way of talking to somebody because you grew up in a household like that. And you don't understand how destructive it is. Now, remember what I said in point number one, the, the woman has a great power of influence. So you literally have the power to make him feel so much better or to make him feel so much worse. And I don't think you understand how impactful it is more specifically for, who, for a man who actually likes you and cares about you and cares about your opinion. Right. And even if he doesn't always show that with his actions, if he is a man. And when I say that, I mean, like, you know, no, no one's perfect. But 
And, and some men may not always be as expressive about how important your perception of them is to them. But if he's really into you, man, it can really do damage. So you want to be mindful that even when you have to constructively criticize, you criticize in a way that says, well, let's do this better. Let's make this better. But also acknowledging some of the good things. So one of the things is that, you know, it's kind of like compliment sandwich. I don't know if some of y'all have never heard of that or not, but compliment sandwich is basically when you say something that you like, then you give the criticism, then you end it with something that you like. You, you soften the blow of the criticism. And I want to use the word constructive criticism, right? Because people don't want to feel like all you ever do is point out the bad. And for some of you, you've been on that, that end of the situation where the man you were with, that's all he ever did was point out what you did wrong, but never did he highlight the things you did well or that he appreciated from you. And that's draining. You know what I'm saying? So as a woman, you want to be very mindful of that. Excuse me. You want to be very careful with your words. Remember, it's not what you say. It's how you say it. And so even with what you're saying or how you're saying it, consider your tone. Consider the, the, the energy, the spirit you're coming in with. And so one of the things I, I highly encourage is before you engage in conversation where you think there's a chance that things could go a little left or you can get a little emotional and push you into a negative way of coming at him, right? And even if you don't think that's the case, just pray before you speak to somebody. I always say pray before you react. Pray before you speak. Pray before you overthink. Praying, if you, for some of you might be meditating, bring yourself to that calm place and then go into the conversation. That will help take a lot of the edge off. But if you go in full steam ahead and you don't take a chance to breathe, you may not realize how negative you are coming across. So I'll say this before I move on to the next point. For those of you who are already in a relationship, Ask your man how you come across. Don't assume. Don't, don't leave it up to you to say, well, no, I think I'm good. No, 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 no. Ask your partner. And even if you're not in a relationship, ask your siblings. Ask your friends. Ask your coworkers. Get the opinions of others to understand how they are receiving you versus how you think. Because, again, a lot of times we don't even realize how negative we may be coming across to individuals. All right? And by us being open to hearing what they have to say and then open to making corrections, that can make everything so much better. All right, so let's keep this going. And the third thing for you to know on how to treat a man is learn his desires and fulfill them. Now, hold on, because <laughs> I know some of y'all are like, wait a minute. <laughs> what are you talking about here, Stephon? Hear me out. Hear me out, okay? So one, let me start with this foundational piece. I've had a lot of situations where a woman will say to me, you know, let's say a situation ends in them breaking up or ends in divorce, right? And they'll say, I did everything for this man and wasn't good enough. He didn't appreciate anything. And when I dig deeper, what I found out was she did everything she wanted to do. She wasn't doing everything he actually wanted from her, okay? And so there was a disconnect in what he really needed and what she was prepared to do. And if we want to have a successful, long-lasting, loving relationship, it's about tapping into their specific needs and desires. Now, with that understood, I, I acknowledge the fact that a man may have desires that cross the line you are not prepared to cross, or that might compromise your values and beliefs. And I am in no way saying that you should cross that line if it's going to cause that problem for you, all right? And this is why we want to find out what those needs and desires are as early as possible in the dating process. Because if I know early on, whether it's week one, week two, month three, whatever, that these are the things you're going to need from me, and I know this is going to be a problem, let's just end things now. There's no point in pushing this further. There's no point in tricking ourselves into believing that we're going to be okay and figure it No, we're not. We're not. Either we can fulfill these things or we can't, okay? So you want to find out what it is. If it's a problem, fine, we move on. If it is not a problem for you, then yes, this is where we have to now fulfill these things. 
and we want to be consistent because it's not just about doing it once, doing it every blue moon. It's doing it as consistently as that individual needs. And of course, again, relationships are a two-sided experience. So this is the same message I would give to a man that he has to learn your needs and fulfill them. And, and the successful relationship is two people who have embraced each other's needs and desires and are willing to fulfill them consistently. That is the key. But again, we can only focus on what you can control. So you have to be willing to have those conversations. And I want to say that you want to get as specific as possible when discussing these types of things. I think that sometimes we're too on the surface. We're too vague. We're not being specific enough. This is, this is very common, especially when a woman's expressing her desires at times. Like, so I'll give you an example. A woman might say to the man, well, I, I just want you to spend time with me, right? But to a man, time with you might be once a week, <laughs> right? But for you, what you actually want is, no, time with you is four or five times a week. That needs to be specified so that he understands what is required of him. Now, let's flip it. Same thing. Let's, let's just use intimacy, right? He, you, you may feel like, okay, I just have to be intimate with him every now and then and he should be good. But some men may only want it once a week. It's not common, but some men might only want it once a week. Some men might want it four times, five times, whatever it is. You want to find out what that is. And again, you want to be honest with yourself. Don't agree to things just because you're caught up in the hype of, I really like this guy and I want to impress him or I want to make this work. So I'm going to do these things that I know I can't sustain. That's a problem. Be honest with yourself. Or be honest about what you're going to need in return to sustain it, okay? So using intimacy, because it's such a common issue I come across in relationships, marriage, so on and so forth. You know, there's a lot of things that men don't understand that a woman needs to be uh, in, sexually receptive to him, essentially. And so let's just say, for example... You need a lot of quality time. You need a lot of non-sexual intimacy in order to be really ready for him in the bedroom. Or you need a lot of foreplay, right? Let's say foreplay is very important to you. So you got to be able to say to him, like, listen, all right, you want it this much? Cool, but I'm going to need this to be able to keep that up. So he understands the role he has to play. You understand the role you play. And if you both are like, all right, cool, we can do that. Then we're good to go. So have these discussions, dive deeper, be specific, and be honest about what you are willing to do and what you can sustain in the long run. All right, so now the next thing on the list of how to treat a man. Learn how to flow with him, not against him, all right? So here's what I mean by that. And I want to be very careful in the way that I explain this. But I'm, let me start off with an example for myself. All right. And I will not say that this example applies to everyone. I'm just using myself to kind of set the stage. So I know with like with me, I, I can sometimes speak in a very dominant way. Right. So let's say we're hanging out, we're dating and I'm, we're in the house or whatever. And I'm like, come here. Now, to some, that's like, well, why can't you say please? Now, to me, in that moment, if I'm a good man to you, if I treat you with nothing but love and respect, why are you taking my come here as like a negative thing, right? You, you know I'm not being disrespectful to you. You know I'm not speaking to you in some kind of bad way. Flow with me. Just come over. <laughs> like, wh why even be resistant? Why is not? You come over here. Why are you doing all that? Why, why are you making this difficult? You know what I'm saying? And, and, and this is the, just a small example of what I mean by flow with him. Some of y'all, y'all let your pride get in the way, right? And there's always resistance to the things that he says or asks for. And sometimes even when a man says, please, it's like it's a problem because your pride kicks in and says, well, no, why I have to do what you want to do? And my thing is, again, if he's asking you for something that actually is uh, overly inconvenient for you, if he's asking you for something that compromises your values or beliefs, th that's a different story. But using my example, there's no reason why you can't come here. <laughs> like, there's no reason why you can't just walk over, sit right next to me or lay on me or whatever I'm asking for in that moment without any resistance, you know? And so 
I'm not going to sit here and say that's a common issue or not, but it is something that I've seen in a lot of situations and, and it shows in various different ways. And it kind of pours into that whole allowing a man to lead you. Now, I know a lot of women are resistant to just that whole concept of, well, why does the man have to lead? Excuse me. But I always say, number one, again, if, if he's, if he's a man that's a good man and he's shown you love and respect, then understand that's, that he's trying to lead with love. And leading with love is not trying to undermine you, is not trying to take advantage of you. It's trying to make decisions or do what I feel is best for the both of us, right? And as well as just giving him that respect. Now, also understand that accepting his lead is going to create more harmony for the both of you. It's going to take burdens off of your back in the long run because trust and believe, sit down with women where they had to be the leader in the relationship and, and, look, and look at that relationship five, seven, 10 years later and see how that woman feels. Drained, unhappy, resenting that man in most situations, if damn near all. But there's probably, of course, there's exceptions to every rule. But you gotta understand what stage you're setting when you can't accept his lead in, in any kind of way. And again, if you say to yourself or you're saying to me, but he has not shown himself worthy, then I will say to you, why are you with him? Why are we entertaining this situation? If we can't have that level of harmony, then why are we even bothering with this? You know, we, we got to be real with ourselves. Then, okay, either he's not the right man or he is not ready to assume such a position in your life. Now, if, if you can generally tell me that as a woman, you like to be the leader and that's your thing and you're going to be happy for the rest of your life leading, do your thing. Do your thing, all right? But in all my years of doing this, it's, it's extremely rare. I've never seen it. But I, and so I'm just going to say it's extremely rare to see that woman who many years later is happy having to always be in that role. So going back to the initial point, learn how to flow with him. Learn how to make things easy. Just go with his flow at times. You know what I'm saying? And of course, I'm not saying that a man can never go with your flow, right? But I do think that you have to ask yourself, am I being difficult in certain moments? Am I creating unnecessary resistance? Because that can create frustration, especially when, again, this is a good, genuine man who has, has been doing his part. So why not give him the benefit of the doubt? All right. So I actually, once again, I always have like a longer list and then I, I carry on a little much with some of these points. So I can't get through the entire list. Uh, so I might have to make a part two. But here's another one that's very important on how to treat a man. Let no man disrespect him through you. All right. So what do I mean by that? As a woman, you know, one of the big issues and even fears that men have is a woman's, a woman not being loyal, a woman allowing other men to cross lines that should not be crossed. All right. And this is why some men are, and I'm not saying whether this is right or wrong. I'm just explaining it. Why some men are very, um, What's the world look good? They're, they're very, they have this, they're very, they have a strong stance against how a woman presents herself on social media, right? Because they feel like you're inviting disrespect, you're inviting uh, uh, unnecessary male attention, right? And if you're inviting these things, then what else are you willing to do with it? Now, again, not every man holds that perception. Uh, I'll be honest, I'm a guy who has a little bit more of a, lackadaisical approach, I guess you could say to that, uh, not as stern on those types of things. So I see things in a very different way. We won't get into that right now. But the point is, a man does not want a woman who allows other men to think it's okay to be trying to flirt with her or, um, you know, entertaining their conversation in any kind of way, um, having, com having inappropriate conversations with them. And listen, as much as, as much as y'all may feel like, no, that's just the men doing that. Let me tell you, there's a lot of women that do that too. And, and sometimes I'm, I'm not excusing it, but I will say that some women in that moment, they get caught up in the moment of the attention and they don't realize how they're behaving or how they're allowing inappropriate conversation to occur. Right. Cause it may not be as overtly disrespect for inappropriate, but it's still crossing a line. And, and the key is you have to ask yourself, 
If my man was having this kind of conversation, how would I feel? If my man was entertaining this type of attention, how would I feel? You know what I'm saying? Um, like there's just certain things you just have to be mindful of. And you, you have to, as a woman, have to be willing and prepared to check a man, let him know, hey, I'm taken. I got a man. That's it. You know what I'm saying? And show your man that he is respected. And you're not going to let no man get away with nonsense because you are his woman. You are with him the same way he should be doing with you. All right. And I will say this, though, I do think it's very important for couples or for individuals when they're dating to discuss what is considered inappropriate. I think we sometimes forget that people have very different perceptions on what is cheating, what is inappropriate. So it is not good to assume. OK, there are some people who feel I literally saw a post the other day on the Internet that said any conversation with another man that is done in secret is cheating, all right? Some may agree, some may disagree. Either way, it's not about what the general public thinks, it's about whoever you are dating or are in a relationship with, what, they, what do they consider inappropriate? And for some of you, if we had that conversation early enough, hopefully, you may discover that what they feel is unacceptable is not gonna work for you. So for example, you may come across a man who feels like any male friendship is inappropriate and should not be had. And you may have male friends that you have genuine platonic friendships. I know some people don't believe in that, but it can happen. It can happen. I have genuine platonic friendships with women who are in relationships and I know their man and there's nothing but love and respect, right? Which is a, to me a huge piece of it being a genuine friendship. But anyways, um, he may feel like, nah, anything is off, is off limits. And for you, you may feel like that, that's going too far. And that doesn't work for me because these men are like my brothers or this man is like my brother genuinely. And that creates a conflict where you're not comfortable now in this relationship. And it, and it may in some situations speak to deeper insecurities in that man. You know what I'm saying? That he's not resolved and could be a, a precursor to more controlling behavior, more obsessive behavior, so it has to be discussed. So again, we, we want to have these talks as early as possible so that we know what we are signing up for. We understand what the, where the boundaries should be drawn, you know, what is considered disrespectful. And now we can get on the same page and create a harmonious, loving relationship, right? Because again, it's not just about how you treat him. It's also about how he treats you. And we can treat each other the way that we need to be treated we can have success with each other. Hey, thank you for watching this video. I pray it was helpful to you. Be sure to watch this one over here on Make Him Desire You, Five Things Men Find Irresistible in Women. He's dealing with these different issues. Where's the energy I need for us to love on each other? Where's the energy for us to laugh and enjoy life? It's being robbed by these situations. Mm -hmm. So yes, that's definitely uh, uh, one side of not bringing peace to a relationship.